tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after show entertainment. Johnson. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menounos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! So good. Wait for it. Wait for it. Yeah, I am invincible. What was I running for? Ooh, holy Woo! Kelly Clarkson. Hello, everybody. You are watching and listening to AfterBuzz TV's The Voice After Show. It's season eight, episode six. The blinds end, the battles begin. Yes. And th that was just beautiful music in my ears. I'm Jason Eichler. You can follow me on Twitter at Jason Eichler. This lovely, sexy... Lady to his left is Stephanie Georgian. You can follow me on Twitter at Stephanie Georgie. Feel free to tweet me during the show and or go to AfterBuzzTV.com and join our chat roll. Yeah, because we want to hear what you have to say tonight. Stephanie G and I will continue to finish each other's sentences because exactly. it's just us here. You know, while you're there, go ahead and subscribe to our page down below if you haven't already and or find us on iTunes and on SoundCloud. Write us five stars. Leave us comments. Let us know what you think. Bam. Bang, bitch. I don't even think I'm allowed to say that, but I don't care. Cause it's I just don't dead. care. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's kick things off with Nathan Hermida. And he's a 17-year-old Filipino kid who sang Sure Thing. I don't know what I was expecting when he started singing, but I was just like, wow. You know what? It was so funny because there is one, there's another... Uh, after bus host in the room and she's like it's why do all filipinos either sing can't sing or they're the most amazing singers and i feel like that's a little bit true but he did do amazing and i think what also helped was his song choice we haven't had like refreshing song in a while you know yeah because i this feel like is... especially with this type of voice and this is actually the same thing i have to say about the singer that went after him is they'll always do like a ray lamontane song mm -hmm. and it's like we've heard it we get it you can sing that Exactly. But I thought he did a really fresh song, and he has he such did. control over his voice. And when he took it up to the like high notes, I was like, "Wow!" Yes. And I'm surprised people don't use songs like from Miguel and or like Frank Ocean. Like those are great songs that you can really kind of show your vocals and your artistry, and if you could find it and whatnot. I mean, those are also beasts of songs to take on. Hey. But it, he could do it, and I think this is the type of music he'll be making. Mm -hmm. Um. And I'm actually, I actually wanted him to be on Team Christina because she's got Nick Jonas as her advisor, and I could see him going the Nick Jonas route. Oh right, I cannot like that believe that vibe. Nick Jonas. I didn't, I didn't know that by the way, everyone. That Nick Jonas was going to be Christina's mentor, and I'm freaking out inside. We love Nick Jonas. Right, Jason, I hope, I Jason, hope and Chloe better pants. take me to the red carpet for one of these things. <laughs> I hope he takes off his pants at one point. So anyways, Nathan made it onto Team Adam. Mm -hmm. I actually think Adam will be a good fit for him too, though. I think he will also. Actually, he could maybe sing a Maroon 5 song. Well, that's my point, because I feel like um, Nathan has his R&B down. Mm -hmm. I don't really think that he needs that much help in it. Adam, I think, will bring, because he said R&B popish, will help him get his popish side. And I think the fact that he can play the guitar so well just makes him mm -hmm. that much more of like a, like a rock sex symbol yes and i'm happy that, i'm happy that pharrell wanted to see it because he was right just the way that he did it he had like a swagger to it yeah and which is funny because a lot of times when somebody's up there just playing the guitar you're kind of bored right but he did it sexy but he like and, brings oh, you and, in with it and christina even said it she's like there's something about it that you did it seductively and i think it's true which also props to the song for that because right cause but it i just mean helps. He, he did it well mm -hmm. um up next was paul fow i think is how you say it mm -hmm. and he sang fly to the moon same note mm -hmm. he has such a crazy Let crazy good voice see. i thought he was singing a ray lamontane song with this voice mm -hmm. and i love that he did this sort of throwback thing it's so genius it is because you, you, you can never go wrong with around frank. to literally rock, watch frank sinatra and then it's just like this right? little hipster kid in other words yes so good so smooth so raspy mm -hmm. but like a controlled rasp yeah. i think a lot of times with the rasp on this and show is they don't control it right and i'm happy he didn't go crooner with it yeah you know so that was nice because it, it would have been typical otherwise but he brought a good song sang it well and 
with his, I don't want to say his own arrangement because it's not a different arrangement, but like his style. Yeah, because he didn't. It doesn't sound like he's ripping off Frank Sinatra exactly. by any means. It sounds like he's. It sounds like a current artist. Right. Like this almost sounds like when they do those compilation albums where it's like th- like new artists mm-hmm. doing old songs. Right. That's what this reminds me of. Exactly. Absolutely. Um. So he's gonna be on Team Pharrell, and I actually think that'll be a perfect fit for him. Mm-hmm. Abs- I think so too. Good well, for Pharrell. Good for the him. We are just agreeing on everything, so this is probably going to go pretty fast. Right. Um, let's check the chat roll to see if anybody else has anything to say. Um, I think, oh, let me see what her name is. Someone tweeted me. She said, how did you want to, how to contact us? We're here, girl. I'm looking at my phone. Let me know if you want to say something. Well, let's see. Andrew Kirk says, yeah, it's only week three. Cycle eight. Yes, this is flying by. We've had a couple big art bank artists this season, right? Besides this guy, mm-hmm. Andrew, you are correct. Keep chatting, guys. Keep chatting. Let's talk about Vance Smith. He is Karina the Martinez, guy, sorry. Karina Martinez, hello. He is from Detroit, Michigan, and he's saying, reach out, I'll be there. I was actually very underwhelmed by you, Vance Smith. Um, I don't want to say underwhelmed, but I, you also didn't take me anywhere. I think I expected you to be as good as you were. I think it sounded a little amateur, and I thought, with this kind of music, your runs have to be on point, and I thought his run, and runs were pitchy. And oh, and that's, that's the only thing I wrote. His, his runs were all right. Great voice, his run was all... That's, oh, see, there we go. Yeah. I said not worth a chair turn. Yeah, and he did only get one. Well, I thought he got Pharrell and Christina. Did he? I think so. I, maybe towards the end? It was like in the last like split second, Okay, but I could it be It was wrong. the last split second. And he... I'm actually happy he went with Christina, because I feel like she can at eliminate least him. work, well, A, oh, eliminate him, no sorry. <laughs> or B, work on his vocals, because I feel like Pharrell's really good for, like, artistry, but somebody mm-hmm. like this guy needs, like, actual vocal training. Yes, and what he does have that Pharrell was even talking about, he has a great look. He's kind of fine. You into that? A little bit. Well, that's good then. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I don't think... I'll be, I'll That's be how shocked. Jason and I talk out. Yeah. I'm sorry you world. waited. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't think he's gonna make it to the live rounds. I'll be shocked. Mm-hmm. And how funny! Sorry, I'm gonna go go on past Vance. That uh, Chloe mentioned this song last week. Oh, so do you want to talk about Caitlyn? Yes! Caitlyn Caparoli, I was, oh, believe was how you say it. Oh my goodness! She's singing "Impossible" by Alicia Keys and Christina Aguilera. Um, you know what? I was not... You didn't not... like it. I, of course you didn't. No, 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 no. Oh. I was not expecting her to be good. Oh, me neither. I was expecting her... I'm like, oh, God, you're going to ruin Christina's song yeah. in front of Christina. And then I was like, oh, she's got this. Even oh, wait, Christina was it. like... Yeah. Listen to her. You know what's interesting Ooh. is the way she, like, her tone when she's not wailing, she kind of reminds me of Carrie Underwood. Ooh, Nice. Like, very clear with, like, a little bit of twang in there. Yeah. But she, she's but so she, good. And yeah, this song she can... is a beast. Right? And when she sang it with Christina, get the F out of oh here. Oh, my God. That was the best part of the whole episode and today. She, and just like Pharrell said, he stood, but he, like, backed up and was like, wow, look at you going, to, not against Christina, but singing with her and not messing up. And then, like, just pulling that harmony out of nowhere. I thought that was so good. Killer. She straight killed it. I'm, I'm like actually shocked because I, this song is so hard to do and sound like she makes it sound like it's her own. She does. And I liked it because even when she was singing with Christina, the fact that she could sing along with her, it made, I was like, hey, so she does know that song. Caitlin yeah. knows it. That's why she was able to sing it the way that she could. Because someone else singing it with her wasn't going to mess her up. And because she sings along with Christina anyways. Yeah, that's true. So right? she's, she's, she's like, oh, practice. this, don't worry, I've done this in my car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was so good. Um, I wish she could have been on Team Christina. Me too, and so does Christina. That would have been crazy. She might get it in the steel. She might. It'll be interesting. I doubt to that see... she'd lose a steal, though. I mean, lose a battle. Oh, that's true. It depends, though, because I don't. I don't think Pharrell is as concerned about like vocal ability, which I think is why he lost really early on last season. Because Christina will like always choose the better singer, right? Which I, I prefer personally. I'd rather have somebody who can sing on point the whole time. Hmm. That'll be a good little discussion for our first battle. Okay. Um, let's talk about, actually, I'm going to probably be on the same side as you for that. Cause up until that point, okay. um, let's talk about Hannah Kirby. Actually, let's check in with the chat roll. Yeah. Well, Hannah, you know what? I liked her. I felt like she strained a little too much. 
especially towards the end when she was like trying to be heard and I understand that it got very nerve-wracking towards the end because you didn't have any chairs turned yet and everything but it just was like at the end she went crazy yeah she's got sort of like a spitfire quality about her um I think she's good mm -hmm. I think she sounds like she's 45 which could end up working to her in her advantage it's but there's something with her vowels where it sounds like she's got a lot of spit in her mouth Oh. Yeah, I feel you, like I feel that. you. Or like her tongue is too big. Yeah. Um, I was just, whatever I was going to say is going to sound too inappropriate for the internet. So I won't say Jason that. Jason didn't mean it all the way, but I do understand. I'm, what sure I'm saying. some of you do, that it, it affects her dialect while she's singing. Yeah, it's not, like it just sounds like she needs to enunciate a little bit more. And she doesn't have that problem when she's talking, so it's not like a speech impediment. Right. It's like her doing something wrong. I'm not sure mm -hmm. exactly what it is. But I do, I mean, she's got that cool, if she did like a Janis Joplin song or something, that would be perfect for her. Yeah. Or even if she wanted to make it more current, do like a Tovlo song or somebody, you know. Is Blake the one that has... No, he doesn't. I was like, what would have been good is if she were to have uh, Ellie Golding as her mentor. As her advisor. That would have been perfect. Would have been perfect because she's the type of one that's going to have to sing all her music like that. Since she, Apparently, that's how she's going to be pronouncing her words. Yeah, I, I don't feel like she's faking her voice, which I feel like right. a lot of people with this but, sort of voice are faking it. But she is... That is how she's going to... That's how her words are going to yeah. sound in all her songs. It was interesting, actually, jumping ahead a little bit, when Ellie Golding was saying like how she smiles to get her high notes. I wonder if that could happen the same for this girl to just oh, make him a little, little bit clearer. higher. Yeah. Like if she's smiling while she's doing it, it might, I don't know. Yeah. I, I think I'm just ready to hear her sing something else because um, it was good and then it got a little confusing and then they turned and then I was, I, I'm like, okay, maybe you were doing too much for that moment because I need to just see you do a different song again. Well, Relax. it's like they always say you have to have like a build. Right. And there was no build. There was, was no just build. Like, she boom, just went boom, hard. Boom, yeah. boom, 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 boom. Which worked, and I, I I don't know, it is different in the blinds because you want to wow them from the get-go, mm -hmm. but, so who did she choose? I didn't write that She down. chose Blake. Okay, Blake. Actually, I think that would be good if, if Blake even makes her do, I don't know, like well, something you know what, Blake has Megan Trainer. Megan Trainer does have that kind of style. She'll probably know exactly how to just um, put, add something to it to make it sound a little better and whatnot. Okay, you want to talk about the battles? Yes. All right, first battle of the night Mia was Z versus Ashley. Ashley Morgan. They sang Put the Gun Down by ZZ Ward. Um, Lionel Richie is Pharrell's mentor this mm -hmm. season, which is a huge get. Yes. Um, and I actually liked, not even talking about the performance, I like hearing Christina's notes on the big voices. Yes. Because then I'm like, yep, okay, I'm validated in my opinion. Right. Um, I thought Ashley started off a little weak. Because I think okay. when Mia comes in, her voice is a little more textured. It is. And I think it goes back to the technique. Because I'm going to get very technical for a second. If Ashley would have started off with less breath support and just kind of did it a little more talky, like sing-songy, I think it would have started out better. Cause that's because that's how Mia... she also went in hard. Yeah. But she went in hard with too much technique, mm -hmm. where Mia started it out like almost like she's sexy, sexy right. talking to you. Right, she built the song up for us. Um, and I think, I think actually by the end of it, they were pretty neck and neck. Mm -hmm. Personally, I liked Mia's better just because it had more personality to it. Thank you. So what I thought was that Ashley's voice was clearly the strong one, uh -huh. but Mia was sexy on stage. Her look, even the look that she was giving Ashley, she was like, for a second, Mia reminded me of those like annoying little 15 year old girls that would try to compete and be like, girl, you old, you know? Cause sometimes yeah. that's, that's the competitive mind of a teenage girl is that they have that on any other female as if they're younger or something like that. And she was just like, you ain't shit. Like when she was singing, <laughs> that's what this. she looked, yeah. And, and she did, like her gaze was amazing when she was singing and Ashley was a little bit focused on the instruction that she was given, which is also the plus that Pharrell gave her. Wait, who's their coach? Yeah, it was Pharrell, Pharrell yeah. Landlord, she... It was also the, like, it was a plus, it was a bonus point that Pharrell gave her saying that you want an artist that'll be able to take instruction and, and apply it to their, you know, their singing. Yeah. However, like he said from the beginning, it was the personality thing. Not I that think, she didn't have yeah, it, Yeah, and but... I think maybe um, the reason, because he ended up choosing Mia, I think maybe the reason he went with her is because Ashley's a better singer than Pharrell. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you can only tell somebody with technique not to use technique so many times. Where, like, Christina can say, like, hey, hold back at this point. This is what I do. Yes. 
because they're they're more similar voice types mm-hmm. and she can still I mean Christina's vo- like voice vocally can make you feel so much and I think yeah. that's what they were saying that I feel like Christina can give more hands on advice to her mm-hmm. and I just think that Pharrell sees that Mia has that voice she has that persona that she's unbelievably marketable yeah you know like he said he loves the younger ones why because everyone's gonna latch on and then they're gonna help her grow into the musician that she wants to be i thought it was interesting when pharrell was saying like yeah maybe if your voice isn't there like to be a star you have to sell your personality Mm -hmm. which is so true absolutely and that's i mean that's like the it quality the it factor the x factor whatever you want to call it i think think that that's what it is for everything i mean that helps for me i know that sometimes i stumble upon my words or i'll mess things up or maybe you won't even understand me but Fortunately, I have people on my side because... And a charming personality. <laughs> you know. I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay, Thanks. let's talk about Team Adams. James McNeese versus Tanya Boyd Cannon. Uh, Adams' mentor, we should say, is Ellie Golding. And I'm actually super happy to see her on the show because I feel like so many artists on the show are trying to emulate Ellie Golding. And because we keep talking about her, exactly. We've been talking about her because everybody is copying what she's doing now. Yes. And she's doing it so good. This is what we've been saying on American Idols after show, on The Voices after show, on anything that has to do with music. When we compare these new musicians who are auditioning and they want to replicate this artistry that they hear in Ellie Golden because finally you're able to use this part of your voice and it's not these Motown powerhouse singers. Yeah. It's it's the unique, it's the but people in the funny, country, it's the people in the Midwest. If you see Ellie Golden live, Ellie Golden is a powerhouse vocalist. I'm sure she is. She but, just has a different quality to it. But everyone wants to do those like you know like those coffee notes house and, yeah. whistled notes and create those albums play with their guitar and nothing else be acapella and sound that way but no nobody can do it like ellie um let's talk about what we're listening to right now they're singing pyt by michael mm-hmm. jackson i thought they were both really great um tanya took it for me oh this one because you could not stop watching her she was so entertaining no she's infectious the way she looks into the crowd yes. and, then, like, and when she shoulders. was walking like uh, there was you know james ultimately just complimented her yeah and i felt I so bad about that to give james credit though in the beginning i was like okay she's got this and then at the end when he was keeping up doing the falsetto mm-hmm. and doing his own thing then it was like okay this is a little more even of a battle right. but consistently i think tanya just Killed she it. killed it and I don't I, I don't have anything absolutely anything negative to say about James's vocals I just I kept watching Tanya and I didn't expect that she doesn't really have the look that you would think you'd watch her but honestly one they dressed her wonderfully yeah wonderfully to the point where her weight didn't mean shit not that it does in general but I'm just saying it just it kind of it, you don't see that you really just saw her as a performer like she belonged on that stage yeah she had so much like it was, she was so unbelievably comfortable too and I actually liked Pharrell's note where it was telling her to like be a little more percussive with her singing mm-hmm. and I think that helped take it because I think this song you're completely capable of over singing yes because it's I mean it's a song that you can wail on right and I think she listened and when she, what she did was powerful enough. Mm-hmm. And like she proved like, oh, hello, watch me. I can sing anything. Yeah, exactly. But that's that was that was what was good about the performance aspect of it, because, yes, we do get annoyed. Obviously, we all love good voices. But th- or I at this say, early Adam told her it was percussive, too. Right. Mm-hmm. But anyways, continue. Right. But once you get too much of that, then you get tired of it. Ultimately, I think that we do want a build up for um, these these uh contestants yeah and so now she's gonna do it better because you know she's gonna have a song later where she's gonna be able to oh just wail on it go crazy sing take us to church right um so she obviously won that i don't believe anybody stole james they didn't yeah okay that's a good that's a good one for team adam Mm -hmm. um the final battle of the night is brian johnson versus joshua davis they sang Knocking on Heaven's Door, and this was Team Blake with Megan Trainer as his mentor. I gotta say, I didn't know how Megan Trainer was gonna be as a mentor. And when she was given those notes about harmony and everything, I was very impressed. So was I, especially because she heard it and then when it fixed it the moment that she said it, she's like, no, why don't you wanna do that? Also, she's a DJ, so it's she's one of those people that she sings, but she's someone who listens to music a lot. Which is also good, yeah, you know. Like, not every soccer coach can play soccer well, but if they know the game, they know the game. So I, that's what I appreciate about Megan Trainer because she does, she knows the singing game, and I like that she did get emotional by it. And I know that her friend just passed away and everything, but still, that yeah, means but that's that, the point of music, right? It's the point of music, and that means that while she was doing the job that she was asked to do, she was genuinely listening to these. Yeah, two that was cool. Yeah. Um, okay, for me, I have to say, personally, I just like Brian's voice a little bit better. I like the tone of it. It's a little more pure. 
Um, and when they went into the harmonies and he would like take the high notes, mm-hmm. I was like, wow. But that being said, I think Josh's, the way his phrases end, he just kind of like throws them away and not in a bad way where it's like almost an emotional quality. Mm-hmm. And that was really good. I don't think either of them are going to go on to Me have either. huge, ginormous music careers. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have stolen I was, either of them. Um, right. No, I was okay. At the end of that, I didn't. I was okay with that performance. They were both great. I don't think it hit me as much as it hit Megan Trainer. Yeah, I mean, it would have been different being in the room. Right. It would have been different, and had we not heard the rehearsals so much. Yeah. Because they they played a lot of them singing in the in the rehearsal clips. Um, they both have wonderful voices. They're not. I don't think either of them will win. It almost seemed a little bit when it started. Not the vocal quality, because I thought vocally they were great, but the way they presented themselves on stage. Well, even when it started, like when the other one was watching the one sing, it felt very amateur to me. Mm -hmm. Like, I didn't watch that and think like, wow, the stars are born. Right. Where with Mia, that 15-year-old girl just went on stage and killed it. Yeah, she just made it. She's like, hey, watch this. Watch me. I got this. Um, So Brian won that one, but then Adam Adam stole stole Josh. Josh. I don't know why he stole Josh. I think he's good, but I don't think he's going to like... Some of the steals are weird, exactly. Sometimes, I don't know, that's sometimes weird. Sometimes I think they do it just to make good TV. The, to, do, to make good TV and to see if they could apply a different song on this person or... I don't know, I mean... That was just weird. Yeah, I don't know. But that's we'll see. So tomorrow we get to see Christina Aguilera and Nick Jonas. Which will be incredible. We're so excited about... Do we have any news and gossip, Steffi G? Um, yes. So, uh, Nick Jonas and I are getting married. We're scheduled to be engaged actually first, but we're going to do it's like a slow. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, wow. Sorry. I know we tricked you all. I didn't mean for that news and gossip <laughs> to come on. <laughs> well, that's But the we... gossip is, is that I'm in love with Nick Jonas. That's not gossip. That's truth. In fact, you know what? I'll tell you I'll win. Go on YouTube and look for a song called Time for Me to Fly. He sounds like a girl, but that's the moment that I fell in love with him when I was 14 years old. <laughs> I'm really glad we cleared the air on that. Um, if you want to hear more about Steffi G and all of her Nick Jonas love, you can find her on social media. Where can they find you, Steffi? They can find me on Twitter at Stephanie Georgie and on Instagram at Steffi G47. And right after this, for the Jane the Virgin after show, we have a very special guest, the narrator. Uh, so watch. Okay. <laughs> and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Jason Eichler. You can find AfterBuzz TV on all of those things at AfterBuzz TV. We'll see you guys back in here next week. From executive Dude. producers Maria Manunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.